Okay, so this one is all about finding where um, these points would be in what quadrant. So let's talk about minus 7, comma 8. The x is minus 7, the 8 is positive. So that means we're talking about this quadrant. And in the CAS system, C, A, we might not need the CAS system in this case. It's jumping all over the place for some reason. There's a huge delay. I don't know what's going on here, but anyway. In the CAS system, we are in the area where only sign is positive. If you draw a, uh, so we'll just put that aside. If you draw a line through it to the origin, you will notice that the height of this triangle, which is not drawn correctly, is going to be the same as the y value. And so that's the x value. And the length is going to be the same as the y. And we might as well keep it as minus 7. Which means we should figure out the radius arm. The radius arm is going to be 7 squared plus 8 squared for a total of 113. That does not have a uh, clean value, an exact value. So we would just put it like that. And radiuses are always positive. Um, they want to find the radian value of the angle to the nearest interval. So I assume they want the, not the acute angle, but the terminal angle. So if we focus on this, we can find the acute angle here by knowing Sokotoa. And let's just use tan. Tangent of that angle is going to be equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which is 8 over minus 7 minus 8 over 7. So now we know what the tan of the angle is. If we want to find the exact acute, just make it positive like that, and the calculator will spit out the acute. So we take 8 divided by 7, and we do arc tan. So there it is in... Uh, oh, that's probably not it. So we'll try it again. 8 divided by 7. And we'll do arc tan. Yeah, that, that's it. So we're talking about 48 degrees. Now we're going to have to convert that to radians because they want it in radians. But we can just work in degrees. It wouldn't really matter. If that's the acute angle, the principal angle is going to be minus that, minus, minus that. So the acute angle is going to be this. I'm sorry, the principal angle. And then you just make it positive. It's going to be this. So this is the angle that's going all the way over here. And now let's put it to uh, radians, find the radian value. Let's instead go back. So the way to take the radian value is to take the 131 divided by 180, multiply it by pi, and that's the radian value. But let's go back to when we figured out the 48 degree angle. We're going to take 8. We're going to divide it by 7. But we're going to change it to radians. And we're going to hit arc 10. And we get this many radians as the acute angle. And actually, let's just try that again. 8 divided by 7. And we're going to make sure we're in radians. And arc tan. So we get this. There, that makes more sense. Is the number of radians. And it's the same thing. Instead of 180 minus this, we do 2, two times pi. So I'm going to do minus 2 times pi. And I'm going to just make it positive afterwards. There we go. And that is... Doesn't seem right, does it? 2 times... Oh, I know what it is. Just 1 times pi. So let's go back and take 8 divided by 7, and then arc 10, and then we're going to just subtract pi, and just make it positive. And we discover that that is also seems incorrect. It's saying it's 0.94 radians and before we said we're talking about two point actually you know it's the two point two times pi six yeah two can be possible 
it should be more than that. So we're going to start again in radians. That's why radians is a little bit more tricky. There's, it's hard to decipher the exact value. So this is my tangent. And we're going to do arc tangent. So this is this. So let's just put that in memory. And we're going to see if that's actually the original 48 degrees that we found. That's actually the 48 degrees that we found. To do that, we're going to divide it by, um, let's see, it's in radians. So we're going to divide it by pi. So it's that many pi radians. We're going to get rid of the pi and multiply it by 180. Yeah, there we go. It is indeed the correct angle. So now we're going to take this and we're going to take 180 minus that. 180 radians is pi radians. We're going to subtract that. And we're going to find the arc tan from this value, 2.88888. Or no. Yeah, there we go. We got the same value as we got. So that's how many radians is the same as. So you can do it in radians or you can do it in degrees. Gets a little tricky translating radians to degrees when it's there's no pi. All right. B, where is 12 comma 2? Where is 12 comma 2? It is in the first quadrant. Right here. Way over here. And you just got to remember to form a line like this, 12 comma 2. Which means the length of this triangle is 12 if I were to draw a triangle straight down. The length is 12, and the height is 2. To find the hypotenuse, we're talking 144 plus 4, which is 148. And it doesn't really have a uh, value or a, an exact value. And interestingly enough, we don't have to even find the radius of this over and over again, because we can always use the arctan. So if I look at this angle, and I just keep it in... Uh, degrees it's clear that we're going to have a very small degrees like 10 degrees maybe so we're going to use 2 over 12 and find arctan and we're going to keep it in radians this time so we take 2 the opposite divided by the adjacent is the tangent of this angle and then we go into here second degree arctan and we discover this many radians now let's see if it equates to the correct degrees this is how many radians also keep in mind they want it to the hundred i forgot that part which is actually this many radians. But we're going to go with this for now. And we're just going to see if that equates to the same in degrees. So it should equate to, if I divide by pi, and multiply by 180, yeah, it's about 10 degrees. It should equate to about 10 degrees. Now let's do the degree method. Let's switch this back to degrees and do 2 divided by 12. And take the arc tan, and it should give me the same thing as I just got, 9.46. Oh, it did not. It did not. So let's see what we did wrong. So I'm going to take 2 divided by 12. Oh, here we go. That's what's wrong. Equals. And we'll take arc tan. There we go. I got the same degree. So you can see radians or degrees, it works. And to continue for 311, where's 311? Three eleven's in the quadrant one again. And actually it's going to be way up here. But because it's in quadrant one, all I have to do is find the arc uh, tan and not worry about translating. This one's got a height of 11. And the length of 3, I'm not going to borrow, bother with the radius. Because thanks to Sokotoa, the tan of this angle here is opposite divided by adjacent. So, you know that tan uh, of uh, 11, or sorry, arc tan of 11 over 3 is going to be equal to my angle. So I'm going to take 11 over 3, I'm going to keep it in radians. Take 11 divided by 3. 
and I'm going to take the arc tan. And I got a tiny, tiny, and that is not correct. Oh, that is correct. That's in radians, and here's the roundup. And just to show that that's, that's almost going to be roughly, uh, yeah, that's about right, roughly 85 degrees or so. And just to see if that's correct, we can do 11 divided by 3. And we can do arctan. Yeah, 75. Okay, I was a bit off. That makes a lot of sense. What quadrant is this in? Well, it's negative x and negative y, so it's down here. And really, we're just talking about a triangle like this, whose height is 4. And length is 2. And you might say, why aren't you making negative? Well, I want to find the acute. It's just going to make it a lot easier to find the acute. And the acute in this case is the arctan of 4 over 2, which is the arctan of 2. I'm going to put it in radians. And the arctan of the acute angle is that. That's the acute angle, that little triangle. But the exact angle is pi plus that. So we're going to add pi to it. And there we go. This is how many things it is. And it's going to be 4.25 radians. Just to confirm that, this is roughly in the area of oh, 200 and 240, 235, 225, I think. So we're going to take our 4.25 radians that we just figured out. And we're going to take the tangent of it. And now it gave me in radians. Give me two radians. So let's skip that. We're going to take 4 over 2. We're going to put it in degrees. We're going to take the arc tan of it. And then we're going to add 180. Sure enough, we're about 245. Let's see if our 4.25, if I divide it by pi and multiply it by 180, if I get the same thing. And I do. So this is correct. And let's see, is that it? Oh, 910. You see, it's the same thing over and over again. Unfortunately, we can just do tan over and over again. So if we draw a line straight down, we're talking about a height of 10 and a length of 9, which means the tan is 10 over 9. So we just take, because we're in quadrant 1, we can just take the arc tan of that in radians. 10 divided by 9 equals, and just arc tan. And that's how many radians. And we're going to round it up. And then 6 minus 1 is in which quadrant? It's down here. And we're just going to work with the positive versions of that to find the acute angle. So if I form this, we're talking 1 and a length of 6. So the arc tan will be 1 over 6. But then I have to take 2 pi and subtract that to find the principal angle. So 1 over 6. arc 10 and then I'm going to subtract essentially I'm going to put it in memory I'm going to clear the memory and I'm going to take 2 times pi and I'm going to subtract my memory and that's how many ratings it is and remember we're winding up to the hundredth so it's this many radians. And I think there's just one more, or was that it? I think, I think I got them all. Yeah. All right, so going on to number eight. So they want to find the equivalent expression. So you got to check your cast. 
in um, acute angle only. Find the related acute angle. So 3 quarters pi isn't quite 1 pi, but it's more than half. Which means we're in this area. Which means we're, over here this is going to come out negative because only sine is positive here. So I have to make sure whatever cos acute angle I make, I find I make it negative because all acute angles in this quadrant are positive. If I go 3 quarters, how much more to one full one? Pi over 4 is left. So that's the acute angle. So it's negative cos of pi over 4. It's going to be the same as cos 3 quarter pi. If you don't aren't sure, punch that into the calculator, punch that in the calculator. With the negative, they should be the same. Next one. Eleven over six is almost twelve over six. That's way over here. Because twelve over six is two pi. To get to two pi, we're talking about pi over six. That's the acute angle. Pi over six is the acute angle. This is cos. This is positive here, which means I do not have to adjust the acute angle. So cos of eleven pi over six is equal to cos of pi over six. And you can punch it in the calculator to make sure. Keep going. This is a negative angle. Negative a third is less than half. So it's somewhere over here. This is quite easy to find the acute angle, but we have to be aware that we're talking about cosecant, which is the same as sine in terms of positive negative, and it's negative here. So whatever cosecant I find, of the acute angle, I have to put a negative number because all acutes are in the first quadrant. And I can just use this, pi over 3. So the negative of cosecant pi over 3 is going to be the same as cosecant of negative pi over 3. Cotangent, 2 thirds. Where is 2 thirds? 2 thirds is less than 1, but more than half. And we're talking about cotangent, which is the same as tangent, but only sine is positive here. So whatever equivalent we have to find, we have to make it negative cotangent because the acute angle is found over here and over here is always positive. If we look at two-thirds, what's left? Pi over 3 to get to the 180 mark. So we're talking about negative cotangent. Pi over 3 is the acute angle. Still going. Negative pi over 6 is down here. It's less than uh, 1 uh, than half a pi. That's already the acute angle, pi over 6. But this is in quadrant 4, and we're talking about sine. Sine is always negative in quadrant 4, so it's going to be equal to the negative value, negative 1, times the sine of pi over 6. This will be equivalent to that in your calculator. Now, secant, where is 7 over 4 pi? That's more than 1. It's 1 and 3 quarters. 3 quarters is more than half. So we're right here. How much more, if that's 7 and a quarter pi, how much more to get to 2 pi? Well, 8 pi over 4 is 2 pi, which means the remainder here is pi over 4. It's the acute angle. We have to look at secant. Secant is the same as uh, values positive, negative as cosine. Cosine is positive here, so it's going to be equal to the secant to the secant of pi over 4. There we go. A leaning flagpole 5 meter long makes an obtuse angle. An obtuse angle is an angle that's more than uh, 90 degrees. So it's like that. So if this is the ground, and this is a flagpole normally, and the flagpole leans this way, it is now forming an obtuse angle there. If the distance from the tip of the flagpole to the ground is 3.4 meters, so we're talking about 3.4 meters, determine the radian measure of the obtuse angle to the nearest. Okay, so this is quite not too bad. 
If we pretend a flat ground is a lot like our Cartesian graph, here's where the normal flagpole would sit. But our flagpole is leaning a little bit this way. They're curious about what is this principal angle from here to here. Well, to find that, we have to form on focus on the obtuse angle here. And to do that, we've got to go straight down and straight across. Well, it's a five meter flagpole. So that's the radius, or sorry, that's the uh, hypotenuse. And it, from the tip of the flagpole to the ground, so from the tip here to the ground here is 3.4. Now we don't actually have to find the other point because if I'm looking for this angle here, the acute angle, that's opposite over hypotenuse, 3.4 over 5. We happen to know that's the equivalent to sine. So the arc sine of 3.4 over hypotenuse 5 will give us the acute angle. Then we just take 180, subtract the acute angle to get our principal obtuse angle. So let's do that. Let's take 3.4. We're going to divide it by 5. Let's work in radians. We're going to divide by 5. We're going to take arc tan, or arc sine running, and we get this many, many radians, which is an acute angle, because anything less than 1.5 is 1.6 is the acute angle, which means taking 180, or pi, minus that angle is this. I'm going to clear my memory and put it in memory. I'm going to take pi and subtract those radians and this is my obtuse angle in radians if i wanted in degrees this is what it would in 100 this is what it would be radians now let's do that all but with degrees it's the same thing 3.4 divided by 5 arc sine will give me the acute angle. The acute angle is 42.84. I'm going to take 180 and subtract 42.4 from it. We get 137.5. Let's see if this is the same as 2.39 radians. So to convert this to radians, I have to divide it by 180 and multiply it by pi. And sure enough, I get the exact same measurement in radians. And there you go. It helps if you learn to work in radians in your calculator, though. Uh, needle this, that, needle that, 13, 14, uh, quite a few left. I'm going to continue in a bit. Okay, so some of these are tough to interpret. So a needle of a compass makes an angle of four radians with the line pointing east from the center of the compass. So let's just, here's a compass. Compass, here's the line pointing east right here let me do it like this and this new line is making a four radians with that line so we don't know if it's up or down it could be up uh, so this is would be 3.14 radians and this would be four radians so it's either over here or it's over here going the other way it doesn't really matter let's say it's going here and we'll say that the four radians is in here um, the tip of the needle is 4.2 centimeters below the line pointing west. So if this is the, the line pointing west over here. The tip of the needle here is 4.2. Just move it to the right. 4.2 centimeters. How long is the needle to the nearest hundredth of a centimeter? So the needle of the compass makes an angle of four radians with the line uh, pointing east from the center of the compass. So that way, the tip of the needle is 4.2 centimeters. So we have that. So what we have here is if we go four radians, it's like that. Now, 3.14 radians is this way. So we just have to figure out what this angle is in order to answer how long is the needle. And we can either answer this needle here or this needle here. But uh, technically, this is the needle here. So let's figure out what 4 radians minus pi is. It 
it's this many radians. So that means the acute angle right here has this many radians. So that's the acute angle right there. How did I get it? Well, all the way to here is pi, and all the way to here is 4 radians. So 4 minus pi must be the acute angle. So now we know the acute angle, and they want to know the hypotenuse. Well, the sine of this acute angle, the sine of this acute angle will be equal to the opposite, which is 4.2, over the hypotenuse, which we don't know. So the sine of this angle in radians will be equal to 4.2 centimeters over the hypotenuse. Let's multiply both sides by the hypotenuse. We do that, we get hypotenuse times the sine of this. And then we're just going to take and divide both sides by the sine of that angle. And we get 4.2 divided by the sine of that angle will give us the height. So we're going to do that. 4.2 divided by open brackets. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do pi minus 4 to get back to that. Just make it like that. There we go. Minus 4, yeah, let's try that again. We need 4 minus pi. There we go, we're going to put that in memory. There we go, we're going to try this again. 4.2 divided by open brackets, this sign. Oh, it gave it twice. Let's try it again, let's clear the memory. And we're going to do 4 minus pi and put it in memory. Having a tough time today. There we go, we're going to put that in memory. And we're going to do 4.2 divided by, open brackets, the sine of this. There we go, close brackets. Oh, I was in degrees. So there's all sorts of things that's going wrong here. 4.2 divided by, open brackets, radic ra uh, radians, Trigonometry, sine, close brackets. There we go. Equals. And we get 5.54, which makes sense. 5.54. So, centimeters. So, so the big question will be, No, he's not. No, he's not. So, uh, sorry about that. This will be four radians here. So, theoretically, four radians should still give me uh, that hypotenuse. Um, let's see how we can do that. Four radians. No, there's no need to do it. To the nearest hundredth. I don't know if I rounded up correctly. I have to go back and check. But there, that's how you do it. Um, does it make sense that that's 5.54? Yeah, it can, because it's 4.2. You'd know you made an error if this was shorter than this distance here, because the radius should be the longest distance inside this circle. Okay, number 11 requires, again, understanding of the clock. What I don't like about some of these questions you'll encounter in math, for instance, when they have mortgage questions, most people do not have mortgage, and nowadays most people do not have the idea of how a clock works. So at 3 o'clock, and this is also not true, the little arm will point at the 3, and the big arm will point at the 12. And those happen to be 90 degrees apart. Now in reality, a big arm will point slightly to the right of 12, and advanced math questions will have that in there. But in this one, they're making it easy on you. They're saying it is uh, directly at 3 and directly at 12, which means it is 90 degrees. And then they say a second hand is pointing at 25. Well, the other part of this clock is it goes around 60 seconds, one full minute. And so you'll see the seconds marked, like this will be 15 seconds, this will be 30 seconds, and this will be 90 seconds, or... Uh, 45 seconds and finally 60 seconds when it reaches 12 and it's saying it's pointing at the 25 now if you look at that you can get a good idea of how what angle that would be because um, 
Well, let's see what the question says, because I don't want to get ahead. If the tip of the second hand is directly below the tip of the hour hand, so in other words, we're forming this line. Let's pretend they are just above each other. Um, and the length of the second hand, there you go, is 9. What is the length of the hour hand? Well, we have a lot of information already. We have the hypotenuse. And you might say, well, we don't have uh, any angles here. But technically, we do. Technically, we do. Because um, the length of any of these over the hypotenuse will give you the sine and the cosine. If you can figure out the angle here, which I believe we can, you can figure out um, everything else. So we just would have to imagine from 15 to 30, 25 represents 10 movement, right? It represents a 10 second movement. And that 10 second movement on this clock represents 10 out of 60 because it went from 15 seconds here to 25. So we have an arc here that represents 10 out of 60. So that means this arc, and this is just a guess at this point, if this arc represents 10 out of 60, and we know all arcs are 2 pi, we will have a good idea of the radians. So 2 into 60 is 3, 1, 10 over 3 is this. Suddenly we have a good idea that we're talking about an angle of 60 degrees in that acute angle, pi over 3. Now again, that's a guess. We'll be able to confirm this with more work. But it makes sense, right? We go 15 to 25, that's 10 seconds of a 60 second total. And that represents an arc. And arc, we know, over the radius is going to be equal to the angle. But we can also figure out the arc knowing that the total radians in any circle is 2 pi. Which means, technically, this angle down here should be pi over 3. Well, they want to know the length of the hour hand. And the hour hand here, to this angle, represents the adjacent. And the adjacent over the hypotenuse represents the cosine. Well, we know it's the cosine of pi over 3, or at least I hope we do. We know the adjacent. We want to know the adjacent. We don't. We know the hypotenuse is 9, which means the adjacent is going to be equal times 9 times pi over 3. Let's see if that's true, and then we'll check the answer in the book. I could be wrong. I'll have to come up with another method for the angle, but I believe that's correct. So pi over 3. Oh, we want to switch to radians. So pi divided by 3. we got to take the cosine of that, and we've got to multiply that by 9. And we get 4.5, which means this hour hand is 4.5. And centimeters, which makes a lot of sense. And sure enough, when we go to the back of the book, we see the answer for, for 11 right here is indeed 4.5 centimeters. So that's good to know. On to 12, if you were given an angle, whatever, that lies in the interval between 90 degrees and 360, sorry, not 90, one, oh yeah, pi over 2, 90 degrees and 360, how would you determine the values of primary trigonomic ratios for this angle? So if you look at this, they're saying here's a circle. I don't know why it keeps doing that. And here's our Cartesian graph. And they're talking about any angle from this point on. So notice they're talking about every angle that's not in the first quadrant, because the first quadrant is always the acute angle. So they're saying, how would we do it for this area, and this area, and this area? And well, let me tell you. So I'm going to draw a green line for this area, and blue line for this area, and a purple line. For, okay, that accidentally went blue, or purple, and a blue line for this area. Now, if we look carefully for the green line, they want to know the principal angle always. But you'll notice the acute angle is usually what we work with. Well, for the second quadrant, for quadrant two, it will always be 180, which is pi, minus my principal angle, will be equal to the acute angle. 
Once you have that, for instance, let's say you have the xy coordinates here, you will know that the sine will be y over the, uh, this is another way of doing it, will be y divided by whatever the radius is. You will know, know that cosine will be equal. Now, if we're talking about a unit circle where it's radius 1, let's pretend if it's a unit circle, radius is always 1, isn't it? So it's simply sine of y. But otherwise, it's y divided by the radius. Let's pretend they're only talking about the unit circle where the radius is 1. Cosine is going to be the same as the x value. So the sine will be the same as the y value. Cosine will be the same as the x value. The tangent will always be y divided by x. And of course, everything else, for instance, the cosecant will be 1 over y. The secant will be 1 over x. And the tangent will simply be x divided by y. And you'll notice that if you have the correct negative values and positive values, you will get all the sine values. So keep that in mind. That is true for all the quadrants. So that's true for all the quadrants. The other ways, if they give you the principal angle, you can take pi minus the principal angle gets you the acute angle. In quadrant 2, quadrant 2 purple, we're past the 180. So it's pi plus the acute will be equal to the principal. If you need the acute, it will be pi a uh, principal minus pi will give you the acute. And finally, in the blue area, the blue area is just short, short of 360, quadrant 3. Oh, this last one was quadrant 3, by the way. I made a mistake. And quadrant 4. Since we're just short of the 360, you will get the acute from taking the, print, uh, the 360, 2 pi, and subtracting the principal. Keep in mind that if you have the acute and uh, know what quadrant, you can figure out the principal, which is true for all the quadrants. So again, let's move this one where it belongs, right over here. So that's sort of three techniques. And then once you have the acute angle, if it's a uh, primary one that you know from the book, you can just look it up on the chart. Um, since they've given us the angle, since they've given us the angle each time, since they've given us the angle each time, how would we figure out x and y? Well, if we are assuming that we're talking about a unit circle, which they haven't mentioned, and they only give us the angle, in quadrant 1, y, since y over the radius is equal to the sine value of that angle, and we know the sine, uh, we know the value of that angle, we can figure out y, since r is 1, we can just say y is going to be equal to the sine value. Uh, since, uh, yeah, but that's not really figuring it out, is it? Hmm. I think it assumes that you would either know the x and the y value or you would know the angle. I mean, there's. I think they're assuming without using the a calculator. Um, they want the ratios. So yeah, I think it's assuming you get the x y. How would you figure out the ratios, the x y? Coordinates, primary trigonometry. No, they just want the actual values. Hmm. Uh, without using a calculator, you'd have to rely on your exact value table and and then you have to use only 30, 60, and 45. Otherwise, you'd have to use the methods I've just outlined. You're given this. Well, this is good. This is more accurate. It's probably related to 12. So you should work backwards for this, to, for 12. You're given this. In which quadrant would the terminal arm of pi lie? Well, that's a good value uh, question because they've given a cos that's clearly negative. Let's start by figuring out which quadrant's cos is negative. Well, they're all positive here. Sine is positive here, so it would be negative here. Tangent is positive here, so it would be negative here. And cosine is positive here, so it's there. So first of all, we're talking about either quadrant 2 
or 3, and it could be either because we're talking about from 0 to 360. But notice it says quadrants. Could the terminal arm of pi lie? Well, the answer is quadrants 2 or 3. Determine all possible trigonomic ratios for this. Very good. So let's work with first quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, sine will be positive. And in quadrant 3, tangent will be, will be positive, which means everything else is negative. Since cosine is opposite, sorry, adjacent, to over the hypotenuse, we immediately know that the adjacent is minus 5. Why do we know that one's minus 5? Because it says minus 5 over 13. And you say, well, how come the 13 can't be minus? Because the hypotenuse is always positive because it gets squared and square rooted, which means the adjacent is 5, which means we can either, we can use two methods. We know that x squared plus y squared will be equal to the hypotenuse squared, which means x squared, or sorry, y squared, which is what we're missing, so minus 5 squared, minus 5 squared, I didn't get minus 5 in there, did I? Plus y squared is equal to the 13 squared, which is 169. 5 squared is 25. That makes 144 which means y is 12. Now, since we're in quadrant 2, it's positive, which means if I wanted to figure out the, the, the trigonomic ratios, a sine is equal to 12 over 13. Cosine, they already gave us. Tangent is equal to uh, opposite, 12 over minus 5, so minus 12 over 5. And then cosecant is equal to 13 over 12. Secant is minus 13 over 5, the opposite of cosine, and cotangent is minus 5 over 12. For the next quadrant, because only tangent is positive, the same values will exist. The hypotenuse will be 13, the adjacent will be minus 5, but this time the op or opposite will not be 12, it'll be minus 12. That's because we're in quadrant 3 with where both y and x are uh, positive, but it'll be the same value, 12. It'll just be minus, which means very similar. The sine will be equal to minus 12 over 13. The cosine will be the same. The tangent will be, here's why it's positive, opposite over adjacent or cosine, sine over sine, or sine over cosine, which is 12 over 5 when the two negatives cancel out. Cosecant will just be the flip of sine. Uh, secant will simply be the flip of that, and cotangent will simply be the flip of that. And there you have state all possible radial values of pi. Okay, well, we're going to use the simplest one. Well, they're all good. So you just can use any trigonomic value. And I think I'm going to use the positive one to get the acute angle. So that means 12 over 13 is the sine value. But I want to know the angle. And since they want to know it in radians, we're going to make sure we're in radians. And we're going to hit arc sine. Now be aware that this will give me the acute angle of 1.17 radians. So we've discovered the acute angle is this. But we're in quadrant two. And remember what lesson we learned from 13? Quadrant two, the principal. minus, uh, or sorry, pi minus the principal will give me the acute. We have, we know what pi is, it's just pi. We know what the acute is, it's just that. Therefore, pi um, minus the acute will give me the principal. So we can just figure this out. Just put that in storage. Let's clear storage actually first and then put it in storage. And we're going to do pi minus the acute. And we get that. So that's the principle. So, but remember, this is principle in quadrant two is equal to this many radians. And you can always put it in pi radians by dividing by 3.1415, and you'll have pi radians, whatever is 
whatever you get, put the pi radians if you divide, divide it by pi. So that's that one. How do we figure out the other one? Well, we have the what's positive in the other one. We're going to use the tangent in this one. The tangent's 12 over 5. Why? Because I'd like to work with the acute angle. 12 divided by 5. I'm going to make sure we're in radians. We are. Notice that tangent can be above 1, whereas cosine and sine never can be. And we're going to go to trigger, and we're going to go to second, or tan. And we get this angle. Now I want you to notice we got the same angle. That's because we're working with the same acute angle twice. So I didn't really have to go about that business. But it's good to do it to confirm your answer. In quadrant two, try to remember the lesson I just gave you in quadrant two or three, pi plus the acute is equal to the terminal. Well, we want the terminal and we know the acute. And that's not it. That's the other one. So we're just going to add pi to our acute. Recall, plus pi. And this is our terminal in here. And notice it will be the same value. Um, just on the other side, it'll have the same acute value. And it makes sense. 4.3 falls in quadrant 3. And also notice this. If I take, uh, since in this quadrant, tangent's positive. If I take the tangent of this, I'm going to get an angle. Or I'm going to get a value, rather. 2.4. If I take the tangent of the other one, which is this, um, then minus pi, and then I've got to make it positive. I take the tangent of this, I'm going to get the same answer. Except it's going to be negative because we're in quadrant 2. So I should really take the sine of it. But uh, We'll take the tangent of it. We get negative 2.4. So there you go. We got the same numerical value. So we did it right. And if you're going to round up, of course, this has to round up. The 7 has to round up to 8 if they want, see, they say to the 100th degree. And this other one's going to have to round up. This 2 is going to have to round up to... 1 has to round up to 2. So don't forget to round up to exactly what they ask for or you lose marks on the test. All right. 14, 15, 16, 17, and I'll do extending after the problem. And I'm just going to hit pause for a second. Okay, use special triangles to show that cos 5 over 6 is equal to cos minus 150 is true. Let's... First of all, figure out what quadrant that is in. 5, 6 is the same as, um, let's break it down. It's 5, 6 is less than 1, but it's more than 3, 6. So that means less than 1 pi, but more than half a pi, would be in this quadrant. So right away, what do we know about cosine? Well, thanks to the cast rule, we know that cosine should be negative here. Second of all, let's figure out the acute angle. The acute angle will be pi minus the terminal angle. That's the rule we just set up for quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, the acute angle is going to be equal to pi minus the principal angle. Well, pi is this, and minus 5, 6 pi, we get pi over 6. So that is, right away, we know that is a special triangle. Pi over 6 is the same as uh, 30 degrees. Let If you don't believe me, multiply it, divided by pi, multiply by 160, 6 goes into 160 30 times. Sorry, 180. 6 goes into 180 30 times. So it's the same as 30 degrees. So let's mark that down. 30 degrees is the same as pi over 6. Well, we know our special triangle, and we can even redo our special triangle. Let's take a, a the triangle that has equal sides means all the angles are going to be 60, or if you want, pi over 3 in each corner. We cut it, we give them each a side of 2. We're going to give them each a side of 2 to make it easier on ourselves. We cut this triangle straight down the middle, making a 90 degree angle at the bottom. We cut it straight down the middle, making a 90 degree angle at the bottom. Since we cut the bottom, the bottom is now 1. The bottom is now 1. Um, so now we have the bottom one, but also notice we cut the top angle, which was 60, into uh, half, into half, which means the top is now pi over 6. 60 divided by 2 is now 30 degrees, or pi over 6. We now have a side, 1, a hypotenuse, 2, and we can quickly figure out, yeah, don't know why that was 
like that. Um, we now know that uh, this one side is 1, the other side is 2, and we can quickly figure out the other side from a squared plus b squared is equal to 2 squared, or 1 squared plus missing is equal to 4, or 3 square rooted, we can quickly figure out this side square root. Since pi over 6 is here, we can quickly figure out the cosine. Cosine is equal to the adjacent over the adjacent square root of 3 divided by the hypotenuse, like that. I know it got cut off, but also realize that this is the acute angle. It's going to come out as positive. We then have to make it negative to match this area. So that means we know um, that indeed this is going to be the same as the negative cosine of pi over 6. Let us now look at where minus 150 is. Minus 150 starts here, goes 90, and minus 180 would be here, but it stops at 150. Where in this is minus 150 here. This is like going all the way to pi, but coming back. This is quadrant 3, and now we have a slightly different rule because our terminal angle is going this way. But it's the acute angle here is going to be pi minus the terminal angle. So we get pi minus minus 150. You might say, but Peter, you told me it was pi plus the angle. Well, it would be if we're going this way. So this way, it's going to be pi minus minus 150, which becomes plus 150. Um, oh, yeah, okay. So if we're going to do that, I think we'd actually have to do this. Yeah, we're actually going to just be pi. We're going to pretend it's 150 angle. And we're just going to do pi minus 150 because this is 150 this way, 180 to here. So that means this little degree left over is clearly 30. Well, 30 is the same as pi over 6. Let's look at their cast, C-A-S-T. Cosine here is also going to be negative, which means cos 150 is the same as negative cos 30. Let's put it somewhere where we can see it. which is the same as negative cos pi over 6, which is the same as positive cos 5, 6 pi. It will all come out that way. To confirm it, you just punch them all in your calculator and determine if that's true, which means that, indeed, if I punch cos this in my calculator, I get the same as cos this. Let's see if that's true. So I'm going to take 5. I'm going to make sure I'm in radians. I'm going to take 5 divided by 6. Multiply it by pi. I'm going to take the cos, and I'm going to get a negative number. Negative 0 0.8660. So just remember that. Now I'm going to take 150. I'm going to make it negative. I'm going to take the cos. And I get, oh, look at that. I got the wrong value. Let's try that again. That's because we were in radians. So I've got to switch it to degrees now. Negative, and I'm going to hit the cos. And look at that, I get the same value, negative 8.666. Let's take the cos of my 30 degrees. And remember, this one's the acute angle, so we'd have to take, uh, put a negative in front of it. And we get 0.866, so we just put a negative in front of it to match. And now let's take our acute angle, pi divided by 6. And remember that we have to pay, take a negative in front of it after I take the cos. We have to also put it in rad, rad, radians. Take the cos, and sure enough, I get the same number, we just have to slap a negative in front of it. So we've proved, and by the way, we didn't have to go to our special angle triangle because this is also 30 degrees. Oh yeah, but let's make sure that negative uh, square root over 3, over 2, gives us 0.666. And sure enough, it does. So that's always going to be the acute angle from the special triangle, which we then have to make negative depending on which quadrant we're in. In this case, we have to make it negative both times. So this is proven true based on this matching all the numbers. And really, that's just a lesson to show you how to connect the dots. This is called a um, um, trigonomic truth or trigonomic, it has a special name, trigonomic, um, eh, it's escaping me, but it's essentially a trigonomic truth that you have to prove. So we're going to just crop it. 
show that 2 times sine squared minus 1 is equal to sine squared minus cos squared angle for this specific angle. Okay. Woof. So we, could, we can do a lot of things here, but one thing I want you to be aware of is that x squared plus y squared in a right angle triangle gives us our hypotenuse squared. But we've already learned that our hypotenuse squared is the same as radius squared, and that for a unit circle, 1 squared is 1. But we've also already learned that x is the same as cos, and sine is the same as sine squared. This is called a universal truth for, I, again, has a special name, trigonomic universal truth or trigonomic formula. But it means that you can come up with all sorts of things, like sine squared is equal to 1 minus cos squared, and that uh, cos squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared, and you get into all sorts of other things afterwards. But let's focus instead on the actual value. Let us look at what, what quadrant this is in. 11 pi over 6 is definitely over 1, because 12 pi over 6 would be 2. So that means we're all the way over here, and we're just short of our 2 pi, which is 12 pi over 6, right? That's the same as 2 pi. 11 pi over 6 all the way to here, so you take 12 pi over 6 minus the principal angle, and we get an acute angle. Pi over 6 is our acute angle. Let's focus on that. Pi over 6 is acute angle. Let's also focus on our cast. Cosine will be positive there, and sine will be negative because we're talking about this quadrant specifically, but that's our acute angle. Well, we just did the triangle for the acute angle pi over 6. We just came up with all the values for it. Pi over 6 is 30 degrees, and we already determined that this is 3 square root, this is 1, and this is 2, and we can come up with, since we're working with both sine and cosine, let's find the cosine for this acute angle. Well, the cosine for this acute angle is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, square root 3 over 2. The um, sine value is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that means that this is equal to the cos. And our sine value is opposite over the hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2, is equal to our sine value. Let's get rid of all of this. And just work with that. Now, I also want you to keep in mind, and I shouldn't have deleted the quadratic. Try to remember that we're in this square here, where cosine will be positive, but sine will be negative. So it's really negative half. If I look at replace everywhere I see sine squared with my value, so 2 times a negative half squared, what's a negative half squared? It's the same as negative half times negative half which is positive a quarter. So I get 2 times 1 quarter. Minus 1 is equal to sine squared again, which we've already determined is 1 quarter, minus cos squared. Well, we've determined that cos is this, negative 3 over 2. So cos squared will be negative 3 over 2 times negative 3 over 2. Any square root times itself will just get rid of the square root, and 2 times 2 is 4. So you get this, minus 3 over 4. So all I have to do now is multiply 2 times a quarter and I can get rid of my quadrant. 2 times a quarter becomes 2 fourths. 2 fourths is a half. A half minus 1 is negative half. Now I just got to see if the right side is negative half. A quarter minus 3 quarters is negative 2 quarters. Negative 2 quarters simplifies to negative 1 over 2. Does left side match right side? Yes. Therefore, we've proven it. And finally, it's, oh, 16, almost done. 16 and 17, I'll do the extended as a separate video. Determine the length of AB, given this drawing. Given that AC is equal to CD, so that means AC is the same length as CD, and they've written it in there, 8 centimeters, which means we can figure this one out. 
this one, and they want to know the length of A to B. Well, this is easy enough. Let's figure out this one, just in case we need it. It's 8 squared plus 8 squared, which is 64, plus 64, which is 128. 128 does not have a clean square root. So we're going to leave it as negative square root of 128. Now you could use Coase's law and sine law now if you wanted to figure out a lot of this, but we don't have to. Really, they want this here, A, B. We have a side, and we have an angle, and we actually didn't even need this stuff over here. Because if this is 90 degrees, which is pi over 2, and this is pi over 6, all three of these angles, oh yeah, we will need it. All three of these angles must add up to 180. So if this is pi over 2, 90 degrees, 180 is the same as pi, must add up to pi, missing angle x top right, plus pi over 6, plus pi over 2. Let's convert these. How do you get this over 6? You multiply top and bottom by 3. Uh, 3 pi over 6 plus 1 pi over 6 is 4 pi over 6 which means x is equal to pi minus 4 pi over 6 minus pi 4 pi over 6 which is 2 pi over 6 which is pi over 3 so we're talking about 60 degrees up here so that means this little top right corner x not the whole corner just this corner here is pi over 3. What about this corner? Well, this is the same size as this. So that means these angles must match. Since this is 90 degrees here, they must be 45, which means this little angle up here must be pi over 4, which means the total angle up here, the total angle up here must be pi over 3 plus pi over 4. We can just cross multiply 4 here, 3 here, and we get all of it over 12, 4 times 3, and this is 3 pi plus 4 pi, which is 7 pi over 12. And it doesn't simplify, which means this total angle up here is 7 12. But we didn't really need that angle. We don't really need that angle. We have a side. That's if you wanted to figure it out. We have a side 8. We don't have this side. We don't have this side. But we have this angle over here. We didn't even need it. If we look carefully and just focus on this, that this little top corner of x is pi over 3, we can, don't even need the pi over 3 because we have a pi over 6 here. We want this one here, which technically is the hypotenuse because it's opposite this 90. We have this 8 here. That's the opposite of pi over 6. So I didn't even have to do any of that. That means the sine of pi over 6 is equal to 8 divided by the hypotenuse. Let's multiply both sides by the hypotenuse. We get hypotenuse times sine over 6. Let's divide by sine pi over 6. So that means the hypotenuse is 8 over pi over 6. Well, pi over 6 is back to our special triangle. Is Oh, pi over 3, rather. Not 6. Pi over 3. So I'll just take this. That's back to a special triangle. That's the 60-degree triangle that we figured out already over here. The 60 degree triangle has a 2 here, uh, a 1 here, and a square root of 3 here, and the 60 degrees is right here. So what is the sine? What is the sine of pi over 3 if this is 60 degrees? It's opposite over 2. So that means we have 8 divided by the sine of pi over 3, which we determine is square root of 3 over 2. So, how do you figure that out? Let's just get rid of this jumble. How do you take 8? And keep in mind, 8 as a fraction is 8 over 1. How do you take 8 over 1? Divide it by square root of 3 over 2. Well, any fraction is going to be the same as multiplying this thing, time the, the numerator, times the reciprocal of that. So, we're really talking about 8 times 2 over square root of 3, which means... 8 times that is 8 over the square root of 3. So that means that length is 8 over square root of 3 centimeters as an exact answer.
Uh, how do you find the sine and the cosine? You got to go back to your special triangles and realize that this in here of, of angle D, where they taught angle D over here, given ACCD. So we now want to know this angle D. Well, it's 8. We know that angle D is pi over 4. We have to go to our special triangle to get pi over 4. For a 45 degree 8 triangle, you simply make both sides the same. 1 and 1. That's 45 degrees here. And here, but we'll just focus on this one. And that means this is a square root of 2. So for this angle D, we automatically know it's the same as this special triangle. And from the special triangle, we know that the sine of D, sine of angle D, which is pi over 4, is going to be same as opposite over square root of 2. We know that the cosine is going to be the same. It's one of the few times that the cosine and the sine match. 45 degree angle. And we know the tangent is going to be 1 opposite over adjacent of pi over 4 or angle D is 1. You can also do it with sine divided by cosine which will also come out as 1. So there you go you got all the trigonomic values of angle D. We A lot of that stuff that I showed I didn't even have to do. They gave us all the information already to do it just using SOHCAHTOA and the special triangles. And finally number 17 Given that x is acute angle, oh, oh, this looks like it's going to be a lot. Given that x is an acute angle, draw a diagram of both angles in standard position, which would be the principle, and each of the following inequalities for each angle indicate the related acute angles as well as the principal angles. Then refer to your drawing. Explain why the following is true. Yeah, okay. Let's focus on A. Prove that sine of any angle is the same as pi minus any angle. Let's look at what quadrants that's in. And of course, it assumes the angle is less than 90, which I think, yeah, they say acute angle. So here's the quadrant. So they want us to prove that this angle, x, if I put it over here as the acute angle x, that this is true. Well, let's do cast. C, A, they're all positive, and S, they're all positive, which means any angle here is going to be the same as angle. How do I know that's over here? Because it's pi minus an acute angle. This is an acute angle here, anything less than this. So it has to fall in here. Well, we already know that. Since this acute angle here is the same as this acute angle here, we already know that this is true, that I already showed you that in quadrant two to find the acute angle, we have to do this. And what's the principal angle? Well, this is the principal angle. If this is the principal angle here, it is pi minus the acute angle. So that's the principal angle right there. Prove it's true? Well, I think we've already proven it's true. I mean, we could draw the whole x, y thing and prove it's true, but we already know that this is true. Now they want us to prove with the same thing, this. Well, I'm gonna just make a copy here and undo everything. This time they want us to take us the acute angle and prove that it's the same as 2 pi, the negative of 2 pi. Well, where's 2 pi minus x? Well, here's 2 pi minus x will be here. So this will be x, but the principal will be 2 pi minus x. But of course, these acute angles will have the same trigonomic values. We just got to see if it's negative or not. Well, of course it's negative because only cosine is positive there. Therefore, the sine of x will be equal to the negative value of the sine of 2 pi. And you can prove this. Let's just take 30 degrees, which is pi over 6. And we're going to take the sine of pi over 6, which is the acute angle. And then we're going to take the uh, sine of the principal angle, which is 5 pi over 6. Or sorry, 2 pi minus 1, 6, 11 pi over 6. And we're just going to prove it in our calculator. So, switching the radians clearing our calculator, will pi divided by 6 be equal to the negative? So remember this, it's 0.5. Will I get a negative value for 11 pi? 11 divided by 6 times pi, taking the sine value, 
There we go, I get negative 5. So if I put a negative in front of that negative 0.5, it becomes positive 0.5, which matches my positive 0.5 I got from this. So you can always take a specific example and put it in there. Now they want us to do it for this one. Prove that this is true. Well, the cos x here is going to be positive because we're in the all area. But pi minus x over here is over here. And it's clear from the cash rule that only sine is positive over here. So it must be the negative. And yes, we already know these acute angles will have the same value. That this is pi minus x. And therefore the negative value of whatever thing. So if we're talking 45 again. Pi minus pi over 4 will give me 3 quarters. The principal angles will be 3 quarters pi. Which means if I take the cos of that, I'll get a negative value, and I have to slap a negative in front of it to get the cos of pi over 4 over here. So let's try that. So I got 3 divided by 4 times pi. If I take the cos value, I get negative 0 0.707. I have to make it negative. 0 0.707 is what I should get for the cos of pi over 4. So I'm going to take pi over 4 and take the cos. Sure enough, I get 0 0.707 because that's the acute angle. So this is true. So you can see that this is kind of obvious no matter what we do. What about this? Pi plus x is over here because it's 180 degrees is pi plus another acute angle. They're saying prove that tan is tan. Well, that's easy because it's all or positive here and thanks to our cash rule tangents positive over here so let's even if that's 45 again so it's pi plus pi over 4 which is 5 over 4 pi the tan of 5 4 over 5 over 4 pi will be the same as pi over 4 over here and so you can just prove that clear your calculator make sure you're in radians 5 divided by 4 times pi notice that's over 1 take the tan of it we get 1 so let's take now take pi divided by 4 over here, take the tan of it, and we get 1 as well. So it's very easy to prove these, but this is valuable. These quadrants are valuable to know that if you have the x in quadrant 2, we're talking about both pi minus x. In quadrant 3, we're talking about pi plus x. And in quadrant 4, we're talking about 2 pi minus x. There you go.